here this afternoon. The 3-2 pitch to Chris Bryant. In the air to center field. Herrera going back toward the wall. Does it? Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus Christ. This can't be happening. For the past four years, me and every other Phillies fan in the world, we've been suffering ever since that team bragged about the four aces and choked in the playoffs. In the last two and a half years, oh, they've been nothing but a roller coaster of emotions. And we knew that this was likely Cole Hamill's last star as a Philly. After all, the trade deadline's coming up, and as a solid left-handed starter, Cole Hamels was the best chip that the Phillies had to trade away. The minor leagues are in shambles, and we have to start rebuilding. It's as if Hamels knew the suffering that we diehard fans were going through, and he wanted to give us a goodbye present. And now his no-hitter all hinged on this Rule 5 acquisition who was just hitting above his head. Odebel Herrera was an infielder when he played for Myrtle Beach, but the Phillies could not send him down to the minors or they're going to lose him. So... He needed to learn how to play center field in the major leagues. And now, he was all that was standing between Cole Hamels and baseball immortality. But he misjudged a fly ball, and now he fell down on the warning track. How the hospitals in Philadelphia weren't filled to the brim with sudden heart attack cases, I'll never know. Philadelphia Baseball History presents Cole Hamels gives Phillies fans a farewell present. Phillies fans, no suffering. It took that team 97 years since its inception until it reached the promised land in 1980. But even getting there wasn't easy. That 1970s Phillies team broke team records when it came to wins in the season. And yet, they still lost the National League Championship Series three years in a row. And one time, in one of the most dramatic meltdowns that had ever been seen in the playoffs up until that point, Denny Ozark seemingly forgot to put his defensive replacement in for Greg Luzinski in the late innings with a lead. We call it Black Friday, and it cost him. And I can't say the Phillies fans who had been around long enough were surprised. Although it happened before I was born, there's this collective memory in the fan base of the great collapse of 1964. 12 games to go, and what did the Phillies do? lose 10 games in a row, and then go on to watch the Cardinals win the World Series. And the years after 1980 weren't much better. They made it to the playoffs in the strike-shortened season of 1981, but then lost to the Expos in the divisional round of the playoffs. And then after picking up a bunch of players from the old Big Red machine, the Wheeze kids surprised us in 1983 by winning the NL pennant. But then they dropped the World Series to the Orioles. Over the next few years, the only highlight was watching the career of the great Mike Schmidt, the only player to be elected to the All-Star Game despite being retired before the game took place, and that was a fitting tribute for Schmidt. He was, after all, the greatest third baseman to ever play the game and a future Hall of Famer. Sure, we had that great blue-collar team of throwback players, as Harry described them, that gave us all that excitement in 1993, but they all really played over their heads that season. And that became clear when they began to slip towards the end of the season. They may not have even made it to the playoffs if it weren't for the division that they were in. The two best teams in the National League played in the NL West. So watching the Phils beat up the Braves for the pennant? Well, that was exhilarating. But then the bullpen fell apart, and so did fans' hopes of another world championship. But then the Phils got themselves a new ballpark, and things seemed to change. They were bringing up these young players like Jimmy Rollins, Pat Burrell, Chase Utley, and Ryan Howard. And in 2006, they were joined by a young left-handed pitcher named Cole Hamels. 2007 was a really magical year for Phillies fans. We got to see a late-season collapse by, of all teams, the Mets. And we wound up stealing the NLE's championship from them. And Cole Hamels? Well, he went to his first All-Star game, winning 15 games that season and losing only five. His ERA was a healthy 3.39 and he had struck out 177 batters. Now the Phils didn't get far in the playoffs, but hey, we didn't expect them to be there in the first place. Then came 2008, a return to the promised land. Hamels won 14 games that year, but he really excelled in the playoffs. With a familiar beat LA chant going on in the background, Hamels won two games, beating the Dodgers and posting an ERA of 1.93. His pitching earned him the NLCS MVP award. 
he would be honored again in the World Series against Tampa Bay, posting a 2.77 ERA in two games and 13 innings pitched. And that was a victory parade that no one will ever forget. World champions! And for a while, Phillies fans got used to winning. We returned to the World Series in 2009, only to lose it. In 2010, the Phillies came close again, this time making it to the NLCS, but losing it to the eventual world champions, the Giants. In 2011, the front office decided that it was going to pull out all the stops. That was the year of the four aces, four pitchers in the starting rotation who, if they were on separate teams, would have been good enough to be the ace of their squad. Roy Halladay, Cliff Lee, Roy Oswalt, and of course, Cole Hamels. During the regular season, they delivered. The Phillies posted a franchise record of 102 victories that year, and we were all sure that the Phillies were on the road to winning another world championship. But something happened on the way to that place. In mid-September, the Phillies clinched the NL East, so Charlie Manuel started to give the key players more rest. That resulted in a seven-game losing streak. It didn't affect their playoff chances because they were already in, and the Phillies seemed to finish strong, winning the last four games of the season in order to break the single-season wins record. But many of us fans thought that by resting the key players for so long and letting the team go on that seven-game skid, that they had lost some of their momentum. And we were proved right. The Phillies were kicked out of the playoffs in the first round by the wild-card winning St. Louis Cardinals. Worse yet, in the final play of the final game of the playoffs, Philly slugger Ryan Howard, who had previously won the Rookie of the Year and the MVP and also broke Mike Schmidt's single-season home run record, he ruptured his Achilles tendon. He had to take a year off to heal and, quite frankly, he was never quite the same player again. Which began the next great fall from grace as the Phillies fell to third place in 2012, and then fourth place in 2013, and finally last place in 2014. In 2015, the Phillies were on their way to their second straight last place finish. During that time, Cole Hamels had been the bright spot in the Philly seasons. In 2011 and 2012, he earned all-star bids, and he was part of a combined no-hitter against the Braves in 2014. But what became clear is that general manager Ruben Amaro Jr. had mortgaged the Phillies' future in order to assemble that four aces team back in 2011. The minor leagues were in shambles. If the Phillies were going to be good again, they were going to have to rebuild their farm system. The Phillies had already traded Jimmy Rollins to the Dodgers, acquiring Tom Windle and Zach Eflin. The rest of that championship team was most certainly going to be dismantled. And as a strong left-handed pitcher, Cole Hamels was the most valuable property that the Phillies had. When Hamels took the mound in Chicago's Wrigley Field on July 25, 2015, Phillies fans knew this was likely the last time that we were going to see Hamels in a Phillies uniform. Interestingly, Hamels' opponent that day was no slouch. It was the eventual 2015 National League Cy Young Award winner and future Philly himself, Jake Arrieta. Hamels lived up to the moment and gave Phillies fans a performance that no one would soon forget. But in less than a week, Cole Hamels was no longer a Philly. He had been traded to the Texas Rangers along with Jake Diekman. In exchange, the Phillies received Jorge Alfaro, Alec Asher, Jared Eichhoff, Matt Harrison, Jake Thompson, and Nick Williams. And with Nick Williams being claimed off waivers by the Cincinnati Reds on August 15, 2020, no one from the Cole Hamels trade was on the Phillies any longer. The best that could be said was that Jorge Alfaro was used in order to obtain JT Rio Muto from the Marlins. And what happened after Odabel Herrera fell down in the warning track on Wrigley Field going after that fly ball? Does he have it? He reaches down. Did he make the catch? He made the catch! The 13th no-hitter in Philadelphia Phillies franchise history! Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. 
If you have any ideas for topics that we can cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. We have new t-shirt designs, along with mugs, phone cases, and more. And don't forget to show your pride as you protect your health and that of your family. We'll have a link in the description box. If you would like to see more of these videos, please consider becoming a patron through Patreon. Again, we'll have a link in the description box below.